The downstream defender protects the environment by removing a wide range of pollutants from stormwater runoff. Periodic removal of these captured pollutants is essential to its continuous long-term operation. The downstream defender will capture and retain pollutants that sink and float until the sediment and oil storage volumes are full to capacity. To ensure proper operation of the downstream defender, maintenance should occur at regular intervals. Since each site will generate different amounts of pollutants, it's important to inspect each installation to determine when the system is full and needs cleaning. For most sites, Inspecting one to two times per year is enough to determine a clean-out frequency. Typically, this is prior to and after the rainy or winter seasons. Entry into the treatment system or removal of the internal components is not necessary for inspections and clean-outs. So, safety concerns related to confined space entry are avoided. Access to the storage regions for inspections and removing pollutants is possible from the surface through standard manhole covers. When arriving on site to remove the access covers, it is helpful to mark the work area. For the smallest 4-foot model, a single 30-inch cover is provided. All other models have two access openings, one in the center of the manhole, directly over the center shaft to gain access to the sump, the second one is just to the side of the center shaft to provide access to the storage area where oils and trash are stored. If the visit is just for inspection, visually observing and recording the quality of pollutants is all that is needed. Use a skimmer to probe the area outside of the dip plate baffle to determine how much trash and debris have accumulated. It is also possible to remove some of the larger floating debris at this time if a clean-out is not scheduled and there's a large amount of trash. After recording and removing any floating trash and debris, use a simple probe such as a sludge judge to determine the level of accumulated solids stored in the sump. It's useful to know beforehand the model's maximum sediment depth when the storage volume is full. This information can be found in the Downstream Defender Inspection and Maintenance Manual. If the measured sediment depth is greater than 75% of the maximum depth provided, a clean-out should be scheduled. As shown in the video, the pollutants in the sump are above the benching skirt or inverted cone, which is used to protect the trapped pollutants in the sump, indicating that a clean-out is past due. After recording how full the sump is and removing all of the floating pollutants, use standard vector equipment to drain down, loosen, float, and extract the settled materials. Vactor hoses and clamps need to fit down the center shaft. So it is important to consider these dimensions to ensure that the correct vector hoses are available on site. Both the jetting and vector hoses are lowered into the center shaft. Jetting or fluidizing the sump during extraction ensures that all of the accumulated sediment and organics can be reached from the center of the sump. Continue to fluidize and vector until as much of the pollutants that can practically be removed have been extracted as it's not critical to remove everything. Due to the isolated and protected sump region, any remaining pollutants can be safely left as they will not impair the high performance of the downstream defender as long as they are below the inverted cone or benching skirt. Here are some important points to remember as you get ready to maintain or clean out the downstream defender. Coordinate with maintenance companies to ensure that they are familiar with the downstream defender, maintenance procedures, additional equipment needed, and what to expect when they arrive on site. Make sure the location and model size of the downstream defender is known before arriving on site with vectoring equipment. Provide enough space around the access locations for the vector truck. This may include marking off work limits to ensure parked cars or traffic do not prevent access when equipment has been scheduled. Plan ahead of time how to dispose of removed pollutants. Know beforehand how deep the separator is and volumes to be removed. Coordinate with vector operators to manage volumes to be removed that are larger than truck capacities. Contact Hydro International with any questions about the inspection and clean-out procedures prior to scheduling a maintenance event. <music>